applications before us tonight. Um, and what I'm going to do is ask the applicants and, and anybody who wants to give testimony in either one of these two applications to please raise your right hand. Well, you say. Uh, just way to tell the truth, nothing the truth, the matter before this board tonight are the penalties of perjury. I do. Excuse me. Um, Hello, Josh. Hello, Mr. Chairman. How are you? <laughs> I watched this. Since you were the first person here, I was on a conference call. Uh, uh, I said I would, I could, another meeting at 7 o'clock, but I would stay for a half hour and I could. Uh, so I did, and I'm here. Okay, well, listen, uh, our first application then is um, application by Jeffrey Crandall, Craig Crandall, and uh, Paige Flaherty uh, for a final plan review of a minor four lot residential subdivision. And I gather you're speaking for the applicant? I am, Craig Chase, Chase and Chase. Okay, why don't you give us an overview of this application? Yeah, oh, yeah. let me stop here. Is anybody requesting party status in this application? Ron? I was online and the rescue was being turned by itself. Uh, across the pond. Okay. Just uh, maybe s concerns about, uh, terrible concerns, but just want to understand a little more about impacts and wetlands and some of the natural resources. Right? Okay. Anybody else requesting party status? Uh, anybody object to Ron being a party to this? It is a buddy, not a buddy, but an adjacent property owner. Okay. Um, then um, party status is granted. Uh, the, um, why don't you give us that overview now? Yeah, if you'll allow me, I'll just read from our project narrative. Um, this land has, been, has both open and forested areas, steep and more rubble terrain, upland and wetland areas, and in our opinion has the potential to meet any of the goals and objectives of the town plan. The project consists of a subdivision of an existing 39.45 acre parcel with an existing three bedroom seasonal single family residence divided into four parcels. Lot one has the existing seasonal residence served by existing on site wastewater and bottled water supply systems and will retain 23.72. Lot two, three, and four, all being slightly over five acres, are being created with development to be at this time. Soils test pits have been dug with Agency of Natural Resources Regional Engineer Carl Fuller present to ensure that the lots being created are capable of sustaining wastewater disposal if or when development of the lots is desired. Um, in all the areas that we tested uh, proved out for mound systems or equivalents. Um, Obviously, uh, further design testing, both at the state and town permitting, will be required before any development can commence on these lots. Uh, the parcel is in Shoreland Conservation Zoning District. All lots meet the minimum lot size of five acres. Lots two through four meet the minimum road frontage of 300 feet. Lot one is served by an existing driveway and easement of undefined width off of Brookfield Road, and to be compliant with the zoning regulations for the lots, that do not have road frontage, a 50-foot access easement in favor of lot one onto lot two from near Lake Road is proposed. Uh, it's our belief that it's in compliance with the zoning ordinances in the town, and we hope that you agree. Thank you. Um, Tom, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? Or? Nope, I think it's pretty succinct. Okay. Any questions by members of the board? Well, I was going to go through the criteria one by one. <coughs> Ron, uh, any question you have at this point in time? Yeah, but I think my uh, first of all, I think there's lots of benefits to, to subdivision and things put together and everything. Uh, is someone that's been concerned for several years about just being sure that our development does maintain the values we have in that area? And the values where we are, the natural areas, and and I think everybody that knows that area is very interested in keeping, keeping it, uh, I guess, conserving some of our resources over the next decade and maybe the next generations going forward. I was right. going with a general question here. So. <laughs> Ron, you have an opportunity to speak to the criteria when we get there. Uh, yeah, those general questions. Uh, 
Well, we can be asked now about the wetlands buffers and the wetlands themselves, the delineation on the site, or do you want to wait till the criteria come up on that? We have a wetland delineation uh, as part of this application. Have you seen the, uh, the plans? Uh, yes, I have. Yep. I, I from Tom. do want to add that this was extracted from the Agency of Natural Resources Environmental Interest Locator. Um, it is not comprehensive, it is not complete. It is what was available on there. Any development of this lot will have to address wetlands, of any of these lots, will have to address wetlands. Um, at this point, until we know site-specific where somebody might want to build a house, for example, it doesn't make a lot of sense to spend thousands on wetlands delineation to find out that it's 500 feet away from where the house site is. But I know. I totally agree that it needs to be looked at once a site-specific development is proposed. One of the things that concerns me is some of the lots, lot four, for example, may be totally unbuildable, which is not acceptable under the code. Because if you add the 50-foot buffer for class two wetlands onto that lot, you're probably going to have an unbuildable lot. Um, and maybe not, you know, but that's where where the wetlands mapping on this site are extensive, and especially the lot one, it really gets to the point where you say we're doing. I'm going I'm to stop you, Ron. You have raised a good point, but I'd like to address that when we get to the criteria about natural right. resources. Um, uh, the general questions were like four lots, three lots. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'd like to get in there a little bit. So, <laughs> is, the, is there access? Nice it looks like there's access from the from Brookfield Road or from. That's the undefined. Yes, they have the driveway that comes in and is traditional use has always been for Brookfield Road. It does have a deeded easement, but there is no defined width to that easement. Okay. And our bylaws call for it 51. Yeah. Presumably they'll keep that access, but it just doesn't meet. Right, exactly, yep. Okay, um, so. Uh, if the board has no other questions at this point in time, uh, I will go through the criteria, um, the subdivision standards. And uh, the first one is the capacity of community facilities and utilities. And um, we do have a comment from the police department. We do. Um, you, uh, uh, Senator Chiu is giving written, written comment. Chief Wolf had no comment. I did speak to, uh, to Davis, the road foreman. And he, his only note was that on any of the driveways, minimum of 18 inch culverts, uh, you, you want to see in those. Hmm. And obviously any driveway will require a permit from the select board right. um, prior to the locking belt. Um, other than that, anybody have any questions with regard to past community facilities? No. Fire chief, parks, recreation, water supply, water supply, and wastewater be on site. Yes. Uh, and that would be subject to uh, receiving approval from the state of Vermont. Absolutely. Which would be a condition of this. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> suitability, of the, suitability of the land. And land to be subdivided must be suitable for use without endangering public health, safety, adversely impacting the environment. <coughs> and, um, and also land subject to flooding, poor drainage, um, inadequate passage support development may not be subdivided unless the applicant can demonstrate the appropriate measures will be taken to overcome physical limitations. So those are the two criteria. That's really what we were talking about before, I think, was elsewhere there is a discussion of natural resources, but I think uh, Ron, your question applies here. I have a question for you. You provided us with a drawing that does show wetland delineation. And there it is. And you cited a source, yep. which I took to be somebody that was hired to do a wetland delineation. Is that not correct? That is not correct. Um, this wetland was part of a pro delineation, part of a project that, for whatever reason, is posted on the state's environmental interest locator. Um, 
our, our reason for putting this on there is boldly right on the face of it, there's weapons. What's, you know, it, it needs to be dealt with. And that's what the review process of the state of Vermont will certainly uh, trigger the review of that. Um, each lot, once they have a site specific development, it will need to be delineated, buffers will need to be maintained. Um, there's pretty good checks and balances. Yeah. Um, I'm not aware that these would require state approval. Am I miss, missing something here? What that well would require state approval. Well, if they, yeah, if they encroach on wetlands, um, uh, but um, would a residential, a, a proposed new residential trigger that? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah it, any septic system has to obtain a state permit that look, septic system and water supply has to obtain a state permit and it goes before a uh, permit specialist at the state to look for other things right, such okay. as natural resources, mm -hmm. wetlands, et cetera. So you're, you're saying that there will be further delineation at such time as somebody proposes to develop a site? I would say they would have to, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I had the same concern you did, Ron. I looked at this and, and based on this delineation, which I realize is a pretty broad scope of uh, work that the state does for their wetlands mapping, um, uh, there is would appear to be room on every lot for a suitable house site. I might have suggested the envelope itself would probably preclude what you call being wetland here. Um, yeah, I, that along with a 50 foot buffer. That's what you're saying, yeah. And, um, and I think we're to get to the buffers. I may, we may want to talk about that further, but I, I think that the, um, uh, based on what you know, yeah. There ought to be a probably an envelope that excludes the areas you understand to be wetlands based on the map that you have available today. Yeah. Are the, but are those? They're not. They haven't been field delineated. They are just correct. So these are presumed to be. They may not be wetlands. Oh, no, I, I yeah. I, I truly believe that they are, um, and I believe there may be other fingers of wetlands back towards Mirror Lake Road in various places, certainly not where we tested, dug test pits, but um, that's why it's so hard if somebody wants to build here, for example, we gotta look at that and make sure it's not well. They may need to come up the bank. You know. I think that's one of the things that concerns me because I know that area pretty well. Mm -hmm. you know. And one of the things the state isn't going to look at everything closely, I think, it's Maryland's requirement is to put on a basic um, buildable land and look at building capacity of land. And whether it should be a condition in the Berlin, if the state has to look at it, still there should be a condition in the Berlin approvals to say prior to development of any lots, you need a, a uh, and maybe even prior to approval and subdivision, you need delineations. Because um, it's so critical. I just had a case in northern part of the state where a guy built a house. The town said, fine. He was taken to court by the state for building a wellness because nobody really told him. He had an on-site system, too. So I think the town has a responsibility. The owner could get the owner in trouble, could get the new buyer in trouble, whatever. So it's, uh, it's something I don't quite, I don't think the state will look at it that closely. The other thing is that there should be, I think, our subdivision regulation has to identify areas that are literally not buildable or not suitable for building. And so you could see large portions of this site that you can still put, build, put a one-acre development on. But you get into what that gentleman in St. Albans, he put trails on it. And he filled it in some that he just didn't know. Platt didn't have anything on it, so so Platt really should have restrictions. You know, submitted for final review, saying here's the wetlands, here's the bunker. Anything in this area needs to go through and demonstrate a state permit before it's built on. Um, so I think that's where it's dangerous in lots of ways for the town and the developer. 
but not off on the state down down the road a year. Uh, we're better off of getting good information uh, as part of this approval process. Where what is the delineation? Um, you can part of the requirements is that the, um, you have to define a building site on the plans. You know, so if you define that and you say the assumption is that there are no wetlands in this, but before a building permit uh, or any work for define those wetland delineations, I think that would cover the public or cover the town or future builders. So that's my concern. I see it one time that we get a year and a half down the road or two years and somebody says, oops. We can't build a lot for work, but we just graded it. Well, do you agree, disagree with what Mr. Chase said? Is that the, the, the process of getting the uh, water and wastewater approval? Would, yeah, we've would actually said. put in, I've been personally involved in putting in on site wastewater systems that the you know, wetlands people just didn't really come out and look at. Um, they don't have to, it's not a state law, they have to look at them. If they're busy or they're understaffed or they've you know, got size the on-site system, so I don't know that I disagree. I think in a perfect world that's going to happen. You know, the staff is in and they, they do it. Um, the project review sheet has the circulated, but like I say, it's a hit or miss. Uh, in my estimation, anyway, in my experience. Thank you. Based on my experience, I, I, I don't feel it is a hit or miss. Um, I've worked, worked Fighting up against this all the time. Um, it, it has to be done. We aren't proposing any development. We're proposing lots that may down the road require to, uh, that you go to development. Um, if, if we go out and delineate all these wetlands, I forget what the, the length of time that that delineation is good for, but it's not forever. It, I can't remember if it's six months or two years or what it is. Um, if the lot doesn't sell for four years, they may have to go and do it all over again. Um, I do see value, though, in making sure that the lot is actually viable. Which is why we dug test yeah. pits and why I had the state's regional engineer there in the first place. And, yeah, it, I mean, we, we feel we've done our due diligence. Um, okay. Um, I guess I, I guess to follow up on that, does it in your ordinance say that we, I mean, how, how could we ever then create a lot without a complete development plan from start to finish? Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I understand what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I do too, yeah. I, 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 and I'm open to, you know, any kind of blanket statement that we can put right on the face of the plan, even in addition to whatever you put in the condition of your permit. That, uh, uh, so the source of this mapping really is, um, well, it is apparently it's based on an individual's work. Yeah. But it's, it is from the wetlands mapping. Correct. The state. Correct. Mm -hmm. And those of us that work, have worked with that understand that it's it's a tool, crude. It's yeah, that's a limit. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, when we say you know when it's done, raw brush. Yeah. Maybe it's kind of crude. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything further with regard to suitability of the land? Hearing nothing. Um, design and configuration of parcel boundaries. Different sub criteria here. Um, I'm not sure that any of these are particularly germane. I'll ask a question about uh, subsection six. Six. <coughs> to allow further subdivision on any remaining undivided land, lots of further subdivision potential and or adjoining undeveloped parcels in a manner that would result in a logical and coordinated development pattern. So I guess what the concept they're trying to drive at is that if you take the parcel as a whole and look at what its, you know, its characteristics are, how, are you developing this in a way that's going to preclude other development, or is there any thought of how that would be accomplished? And I guess what I'm talking about is the land that's back here, which is, um, is not wetland, 
um, but it's not developed. And I know the question is, how would you get there? And is there any, any thought to how that would be done? For future development? Yeah, yeah no. It, I'm sure you could build a road just about anywhere, but it would be hard. It's a very steep bank. Um, from where this seasonal camp is, it drops down to these low <coughs> levels. Um, I just, I physically, having walked it, there are nice high and dry upland areas out in there. Um, it's really hard to get to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, and the number of lots that could be built would be limited by our bylaws at the time, but currently our bylaws would preclude more than three lots off that right of way. And also, it, there's a, there's a, in that district, there's the conservation subdivision that has to be done if it's more, if it's five or more lots. Five more than how many? Five or more lots have to follow the conservation subdivision rule requirements versus the subdivision yeah. requirements if it's within five years. <clears throat> so a bunch of the land would have to be conserved. So now, and then on seven, I'm not sure, again, I'm just reading from this. Mm -hmm. this uh, Iowa, um, so that there will be positive drainage away from building sites and a coordinated stormwater drainage pattern for the subdivision that does not concentrate stormwater drainage from each lot to adjacent lots. So is there any, is this, this wetland, is there any flow at all in the wetland or is it just, it's just constantly wetland? Is there any, is it, does anything move anywhere? I mean, oh, I'm, sure, yeah, I'm sure it all moves towards Berlin, but Bond. I don't know exactly where, but definitely. Um, which is down over right over here. So is, yeah. there, is there a culvert right underneath there that goes into yeah. Berlin Pond? So is there a, a stream or some sort, right? Yeah, it's a basically a big marsh yeah. out in there. Yeah. Um, there's some open water, a lot of um, alder swamp and stuff like that. It's, it's quite nice. Um, so the water tends to flow, tends to flow this way. And if this is a ridge, then, it's, then otherwise it goes down the hill. Yeah, the, yeah, this is a ridge going this way. Though. Yeah, yeah, it's all going that way. I see. Yeah. Well, the height of the land is is pretty much looks like a right thing here. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Was there any distinct drainage pattern in the, in the? There is one stream that cuts off this corner of the property. That's the reason the fifty foot right away to lot one is where it is. Um, so basically located the stream, kept a 50-foot buffer off for that, and then created a 50-foot easement to get back to Lot 1. The stream is between the right-of-way, proposed right-of-way, and the road? Correct. And it, it comes onto this side of the road from the other side, onto the Crandall's property, and then after a short distance goes back across. And so, does that... It's been a while since I've driven that road, but I don't remember primary drainage being on the southerly side. I remember being on the northerly side of Brookfield Road, is that correct? Yeah, there is uh, a crew, well, I don't know. There's, there's a swale down the southerly side also, but um, I, I do agree most of the water is on the northerly side. Other questions with regard to the um, configuration of parts and boundaries? Um, if there are no other questions, um, uh, lot dimensions. This is all on the 3504B. Yeah. Um, speaks to generally parallel lines and so forth. I don't see any. It's terribly applicable, does that mean? No. Building envelopes. And here I guess I have an issue. I think, yeah. I think the building envelopes, first of all, these are five acre lots, and, and so for lots, two acres, um, um, lots more than two acres in size, uh, building envelopes are generally limited to not more than one acre every area. And I think that'd be prudent in light of the fact that I'm reading from 3504C5. Uh, and in light of the fact that you you at least have a preliminary identification of, of wetlands, um, uh, 
and based on your own site visit, uh, I think an envelope that's more realistically of what where a house could be put uh, is prudent on all these lots. Okay. I agree with that. Pardon? I agree with that. Yeah. I think that speaks a little bit to what Ron says, and we can deal with any further conditions separately. Yeah. Subsection 3 in there, in fact, specifically says must not include any un unbuildable land. Yeah. And so that uh, bumps up right into the, yeah. the issue of wetland. So it also, it also, building envelope sort of. It also helps it's, 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 it's your. If you're marketing this without specifics and just selling lots, that, that, that the prospective buyer has a better indication of what, you know, where, where, where you could actually look at something. Yeah, the, the envelope may not be final, but it's, yeah. at least it's an it's a initial indication and, and presumably supplemental by your own visit, site visit of okay. the, the parcels. Uh, obviously, you've been out there with a tobacco, and yeah. so you have a sense of where the water's on top of the ground as opposed to underneath. <laughs> <laughs> um, having never done that before, just are they polygons, rectangles? Well, there is a fair description of oh, what they must they, be. They, so they, they, I'm okay. going to refer you to 3504C, building mm -hmm. envelopes. Um, but no, I think they, they just need to, they obviously, to start with setbacks and um, uh, but they go a step further to, to recognize unbuildable lands. And that would include slopes, you know, um, wetlands, floodplain. Uh, we've recently seen that with floodplain. Um, you know, mm -hmm. just needs to recognize that. It looks like one acre in size if it's just a one principal building, or not more than two acres if multiple principal buildings. Yeah. Uh, is a principal building, does that include a garage, or is that, so if you have no, a second garage, garage, you get, you get two Home, two homes, okay, yeah, two homes. Right. okay. But here you can't now, thank you, because of the zone. You can't subdivide it and make an, uh, a separate lot out of it. I, I believe that's what our regulations say. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. house per five acres, so if you yes. had ten, you could do two. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there could be two homes on the lot one, but you'd have to, yeah. without further subdividing, yeah. mm -hmm. but on the other lots because they're not more than five acres. Right. Not right. mm -hmm. um, and even it does not have to be contiguous. Apparently, you can have more than one envelope. Correct. And that doesn't mean you're going to build two structures. <laughs> yeah, I'm referring specifically to 3504. Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. Yeah. Um, the. Uh, Design and layout of necessary improvements. Uh, you're not proposing any improvements at this point in time. Um, the, um, uh, no rules to be proposed. Well, that's a good time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, it's just, uh, so, uh, so the um, bicycle pedestrian facilities. I would say that that's not a good look this time. You're not proposing any development mm -hmm. per se at this time, so. Okay. Um, and certainly that's not necessary indicated by something that's four lots on, on two roads. Anybody see that differently? Mm -hmm. Water and wastewater facilities. Yep. We've spoken to that. Uh, you've looked at it. But you're going to have to get permits from the state for You haven't done any testing for, for wells, have you? I mean, it's just, it's just septic disposal? Correct, yeah. We generally don't do testing for wells. Yeah. But there's enough room for separation distances. Yeah, there's three. Yeah, three big lots. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a lot of land is being dedicated to wetlands and other things, but the reality is still, <laughs> still a five acre lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to mow it all. Are we going to, that's like this, are we going to, that would be put into the conditions, right? Uh, landscaping? Things that would, would only happen when the development happened? Right. Besides the three house conditions? Well, we haven't discussed that. Uh, why don't you <coughs> speak it out loud here? What, well, one of the things that we've talked about, because we have changed the subdivision regulations to where they're generally applicable to all subdivisions and there's certain 
provisions that wouldn't apply until the development happened and that those things would be made conditional in the subdivision application. So like the landscaping standards would have to be complied with as a condition of the subdivision. Certain things that would right. would be done later on would have would become applicable through the permit. Would he, each lot buyer come back here for review? I'm not sure. We haven't really talked this through, but I think it would it would have to maybe, at that point, it could just probably be part of the application. I, I don't know. Tom, I'm not sure. Again, I, I think that provision sort of envisioned a, a Mass 50 lot right. subdivision where you would expect the landscaping road network, stormwater management system would all be part of the application as opposed right. to... Right, except that we, there are certain things like the, like the stormwater management we did say would have to apply right. to the development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so the utilized green stormwater infrastructure practices is a, paragraph, is, a, is a requirement. And we haven't figured out how we're going to treat that, but ideally, I mean, it's a requirement of the subdivision our bar bylaws, period. So it's not really something we add on, it's there. But um, the question is, uh, will an applicant at a future date be aware of that, or would we need to make a reference to that? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it would be required. And so either the zoning administrator would point it out at such time as it happens, or it's a part of this condition. So uh, I think we should deliberate that. Okay. So that's a little bit of like, you know, that's a sort of a catch-22 on the subdivision, these, the way these are written, is that if you, if you come in even with like four lots subdivision, and you say, well, we just want conceptual approval of these lots without getting the detail of those in, in this, then that's fine, and then, the, and then you sell this lot, and the lot comes back in, and then you say, okay, now you want to build something, now we've got to look at all these subdivision regulations and see what's, you know, whether there's some need for consistency, but the, but the regulations are drafted in a way to think of the project as a whole, the, the development as a whole. But the, when you come back to a person, the person who's coming back is only talking about lot one or lot two or lot three, and what do you, how do you have anything to do with the other lots? You'd have to be in a situation where you say, well, this is fine, what you're doing, but we want to see trees over here <laughs> on lot six. And the person says, I don't own lot six, what am I going to do that? I, I, what am I going to do that? So, just... But the but the problem is is when we approve the subdivision, it, it assumes we've approved all the all the elements. Yeah. So I think we have to at some we have to acknowledge what's in there in the permit so that the buyer does know what potential issues could come up with. Yeah. When they're actually well, that's probably, then maybe the, maybe then what the buyer does is then says okay, if I'm serious about this before we close on purchasing this lot, I'm going to come back here because I need to, I need to have the owner present for that discussion because there may be some things that have to happen that the owner, the seller, is going to have to take care of. If I was a buyer, I wouldn't buy until all permits are yeah. in place, state, local. Yeah. yeah. Just because you never know what could happen. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, I, we're sort of deliberating here in out yeah, loud, we're talking out loud about how, <laughs> how do we apply yeah. new regulations that we haven't worked with uh, uh, to situations to make them reasonable for the applicants, but also to make sure that the uh, applications themselves meet the standards. Right. But I would, I would suggest that on the plat that's filed and that there be some sort of, the, as you were saying before, uh, Greg, just to reference that you have to come back, that it's, that it's on here. Someone's doing a title search, they look at these things, and, and there's a note here clearly saying um, that lots two, three, and four are, are subject to sections, whatever, of the of these yeah. zoning regulations and need to be addressed before development. There is, at the state level, there is some specific language that if these lots were sold without going and getting the wastewater permit, that needs to be in the D itself. Yes. We, we think I've talked about, yeah, yeah. about that. Yeah, we've talked about that. It's uh, called uh, subject to development restrictions language, and I wish I had it with me. But um, it used to be deferral of permit. Exactly. Yes. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, it's in lieu of the deferral now. I see. But that, you, I agree, should be on the plan. Yeah. Um, so we can maybe work on language. Yeah, yeah, we, need to work, yeah. we need to work on language, not necessarily. Wrong on. Yep. 
the whole meeting here. Because, because for example, with the landscape, I wouldn't anticipate that lot buyer of lot two would have to consider the other two lots, but to the extent that it affects their lot, they would have to consider it. That's how I would look at it. But I, I agree, because if it's not done comprehensively, it might not I mean, it might not have the same impact as it would if it was done comprehensively on the three lots together. But anyway, we have, again, talking out loud. <laughs> yep. The, um, yeah, on the other hand, you know, with a large number of lots, you got you got to right, incorporate it right, right from right, day right. one. <laughs> with a small number of lots, I don't know what's called small versus large, but um, the small number of lots, and with time lapse, um, for instance, what is in our bylaws now may not be in our bylaws four years from now, um, and so it, it almost the reference almost has to be general. I think but we, it's a separate conversation mm -hmm. um, because we recognize the fact that bylaws change. Um, and bylaws of time would be available. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that, that'll go for the erosion control, the stormwater management. Um, and uh, so. It is possible that the new half acre um, thing that's coming will kick in before these lots get developed, too. So that may be another permit triggered by the state. Um, they're talk right now the threshold for needing a stormwater management permit is one acre of hard surface rooftops and driveways there. I don't know if it's high third 2022 just back and forth about dropping that all the way down a half acre. Right. At, at which point why not just make it mandatory for any development <laughs> right. you gotta deal with it, you know. But half acre yeah, it's pretty hard to have a road and a house roof, and a roof. Yeah. roof and yeah, it's barn just, and you know, having a half acre. <laughs> yeah, it's it's less than eight thousand square feet per lot for those three lots if you're budgeting it out, and yeah. that's pretty hard to do. The um, so I, I sort of moved on uh, public private. I moved, skipped over public and private utilities, and. Um, it looked to me on the um, aerial mapping I looked at that there is a right of way through here for a power line or something. Am I correct? No. I want a parallel to. Um, There's. No. No. So power lines across that right? There. Oh, I'm sorry. Power lines are there is. Off. There is right here. Um, yeah. Yeah. You, is that, is, that, is that what you're depicting there? It's not, it's not indicated on your plan of what it is. Right. It's uh, in the legend as overhead utility line. Okay. There's I never read the <laughs> Yeah, overhead utility line. Okay. Yeah. The, um, there is that utility line coming up through. Did you, you didn't mention right? any easement of, for the utility? I didn't, no. Um, so presumably there is easements. Yeah. That's not really, really, this is just reminding me when I saw that line on the, I'm pretty clear I saw a line even on Google Map. It never fails, it doesn't matter how many times you review a set for you, so it's always something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, but you're not providing any utility services per se for any right. lots. This is the okay. They'll be provided individually at such time as required. Um, the, um, so I'm just going to read over roads control again, those are clickable, uh, just how we're going to call those out, I don't know. Um, Stormwater management, uh, the lots and corner markers are requirements of the bylaws, yeah. they are your survey standards also. And, um, I apologize. We we are getting familiar with the bylaw, <laughs> even though many of us have been involved in the writing of it, and so we don't remember how it applies to every application we have. So we so almost have to reread it every time. Yeah. Carla, I look to you for the help me in this guidance here. Yeah. <laughs> you look exactly. Right. <laughs> that would be the consultant. <laughs> um, so. Uh, it is applicable, but I don't see any like, anything uh, specific here. Same as soil preservation is probably applicable, but I, so I don't see any issues no. here. 
again, it will be dependent upon the individual's specific actions. <coughs> now, um, so are there any other questions? Those are those are the criteria. <coughs> are there any other issues? I guess the issues that remain for us are going to be the wetland delineation, sometimes it's necessary, and uh, obviously the individual stormwater storm and water supply approvals from the state, mm -hmm. as well as approvals for access from building envelopes. Yes. Well. Yeah, I do think we need building envelopes uh, to be reflective mm -hmm. of what you know, at least at this point in time, yeah. so that. Um, uh, I mean, I, I have a sense of what it would look like at this point in time, but I think it ought to be right on the subject. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You do have uh, I mean, the building envelopes and then you have a note on the plat, like we usually put on saying that class two or disturbance in class two about wetlands requires, uh, or in the conditions of the plat, uh, disturbance in the wetlands or wetlands buffer. Class to wetlands as the lineage would require state approval prior to um, getting a building permit, basically. So I think that's really just critical in telling people that are buying a lot that, gee, they may have an unbuildable lot, uh, or they may have half the lot that they literally can't do anything with. Um, are you suggesting it be on the plot? Are you suggesting it be on the well, I think it's, it's smart for the developer to put it in both the plat as part of the plat and also put in the conditions. <coughs> you know, so it's just it's just really due diligence to say here's what you can do with half of your lot. Yeah, I agree with Brian on that one. It, it, yeah, I honestly don't, don't disagree with you on that. I, it, it protects me too. So yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I think that's correct. Well, it's just it good. protects the seller. Yeah. 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 Um, so that, yeah. along with the building things, gives the purchaser, perspective purchaser, a pretty good idea. He's buying three developable acres instead of five, uh, possibly. Yeah. But well, again, this could get so crowded that you don't even yeah, see it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's yeah, I, don't. I think we'll wrestle with that a little bit. Could it? Could you do two? Plats, can you do this with building all boats and then have another one like this depicting wetlands and, and making locations on that? No, because we're going to only file a plat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think the reference to regulations and so forth has to be on a file plat. Um, I, I think the question is how much do you do, do literally because the regulations change. So I, I don't know that you cite chapter and verse. Yeah. My own feeling is, is that you call out what you understand to be the issues in uh, uh, class two wetlands, uh, that issue is not going away at the state level. <laughs> it's going to be dealt with at the federal level, so, uh, as well, so. Okay. Um, so, but again, could you have page one of two of, of, a, of, a, plant, of a plant? Yeah, if you get it to Burlington or something, you see that all the time where you have all these notes on it and, and they have six pages if they need it for a large development. It's, oh, it's not, I don't think it's... Uh, I think it's helped spell it out. That's what you guys do. You know, Craig, have you seen that before? The multiple pages? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them are just text. The whole page would be just yeah. notes and... Um, yeah, this plan is what we will be using for lot one. It does require a wastewater and potable water supply permit. Any time of sudden blind land, you have to prove that you identified a replacement area, which we have. So this will be um, going to the state. Um, actually, both of them will, but this is the one that has the information they really want. Replacement area for the um, yeah. lot one. Yeah. 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 Is it Tom? Is your concern that, with, that if you don't file something like this, people don't know that there's these yes. these wetlands? Yes. Yeah. There, there. If you see that, 
and you say, what the heck is that? And there's a note saying it's a, it's a wetland, right? You know. There could be a notation just on that, on this, saying, or, or in, frankly, in the permit that we're granting the subdivision saying, you know, that we've become a, a visual society, and I think seeing something like that, it paints a different picture than seeing something written like, like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, it definitely does. Yeah. On the other hand, you know, the building envelopes kind of define yeah, but the concern on it. And, and it also, there's not, there's, it sounds to me like there's an ambiguity on it. Yeah, well, how accurate this oh, other one looks Well, other, there's that. Yeah. Other thing is. It's so, so, yeah, that's We know I'm it's wondering. wet, but we just don't know exactly where exactly. it's wet. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, and the building envelopes are dependent on that. Yeah. yeah. But um, at, le it, at well, least. Well, the subdivision permit will, you know, hopefully address the issues that will need to be addressed by mm -hmm. any developer. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, I understand that. A buyer doesn't always necessarily look at the subdivision permit, but that's really well, the should. limit to how much you can hit them over the head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the buyer needs to read the stuff. <laughs> yes. Or his lawyer does. Or his lawyer does, that's correct. And there's, um, so when the lawyer does a time of search, he would identify these issues. Presumably. Yeah. We, I think we need to deliberate this. Yeah. I, I yes. don't know that we need to tie this process up. Is there any further questions specifically to have the application that we need to address? I move to close the hearing. I'll second that. The motion has been made and seconded to close the hearing. Is there a discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And the hearing portion of this application is closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll call you. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. All right. All right. Our next application is. Mm -hmm. by my agenda. By Carson Block and Mark Nicholson for a site plan additional use oh, review me. to allow the additional use of <coughs> rental and leasing. To a 2.06 acre parcel. And speaking for the applicant is Carson. That's me. Very good. Um, uh, why don't you give us a quick overview of what you proposed here? The, I didn't find the narrative necessary to give you a good clue of what's going on and what's proposed to be going on. What we're, what we're attempting to do is just to seek approval to uh, move a, a Penske rental location to an existing building on an existing lot, uh, just utilizing the, the building that right now is vacant, <coughs> and opening a uh, <coughs> truck round business, which we have now in South Bay. It's Penske truck round. You said the same Penske again? truck round. Okay. And um, what's the current use of that lot? I, I meant to drive by there today, and I didn't get a chance to get it. Right now, Mark is using it for an overflow of his uh, night contracts and okay. equipment. When I look at my Google map, you know, there's a lot of vehicles parked there, and there seems to be a lot of activity there. Yeah. Uh, but that, act so your activity is going to change? Is Mark going to continue to store vehicles there? I believe he is. Yes. Okay. They're going to share the share. Share. Is that your understanding? So Penske will have it that building? Mm hmm And you know, so the major portion of it is, yeah. There's two separate parts, parts of that building. So it's, it's a new business. Basically, join an existing business. And Mark doesn't use it for rental, he uses it for his own equipment. Right. So does he use what's new way? here is it's a rental, yeah. which is why you classify it as conditional use. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Oh, good. I'm getting a picture. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's because of the business use, not the rental of the property, right? It's because it's a rental and leasing business. That's requires conditional use. Conditional use. Yeah. 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 That's that's what I sort of presume. I thought you meant because he was renting the space. No, no, yeah. no, no. Right. <coughs> I think it would be conditional. 
Yeah. So um, we're doing site plan review and conditional use review on this application. And so, um, is there anything else you more you'd like to explain to us in general? I guess I, I help me with the site plan a little bit. Uh, you did not give us a plat, so I don't know where the boundaries are for this parcel. Um, and so I'm not sure, I assume that the building behind you is a separate, somebody else's property, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And you got to forgive me, I haven't been in one of these meetings in about 30 years, and things have changed a lot. I don't know what a plat is. <laughs> I don't know what an envelope is. <laughs> so. well, that's a map. That's right. A map, okay. I thought it did have one. Yeah, but they you have a map, it's easy. not the scale. Oh, no, no. A plat would be something that's in the scale. Okay. Tells you actually the meets and bounds for the property line. So what I was trying to understand is what is the property you're involved here? Could you show us where the lines are as best you understand them on this, this drawing you have? On this one here? Yes. Okay, so this is... This is the existing building right here. Yeah. Uh, this is the airport road. This would be the. Is this the entrance? Yeah. That's the entrance, the entrance here. That's where you um, yeah, it's just this area right here. Okay. This is grass area, so it's just this area. Right here. It doesn't look grass on that photograph. Well, this right, you well, know, it is. It's grass now. It is now. And, okay. And that's a concrete slab. Yeah. I guess it was a garage there or something. If, I look at, if you look at the sketch that was submitted along this, if you compare it to the photograph, well, it looks like, that looks like they're completely different. I wasn't very good at it. <laughs> I didn't have a photograph. <laughs> so it, looks, it shows proposed parking area and it out, out like in this direction. Actually, what we're looking at is parking here in this, this area. We don't know that we would need any of this where he's got these trucks now. But these, this, uh, you got a couple here you know, parking down long. This is what we're anticipating using. Um, there's time the truck flow comes and goes uh, anywhere from six to ten trucks is an average on the lot. Um, sometimes we have more, sometimes we have an influx, and in a day or two it's, it's all gone. So right now it would be you know this area right in here, and potentially a couple of spots over here. And he has the rest of this is a common area here, and this is where he would be parking the rest of his vehicle. Tom just printed this off from the tax map. It is. Oh, okay. So it may or may not be accurate. But it's, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, what our, it's what our what our tax department understands to be the boundaries. <laughs> um, so it's a rectangular lot. And, and you propose to use that existing parking area and dedicated to Penske, is that correct? Yes. Are you expanding the parking lot? No. How many spaces do you propose to put there? there? We would expect six to ten trucks at most, and we anticipated just this area right in here. But again, potentially, you know, if we have more more trucks, a couple of spots where these are right here. Where Mark has this stuff now. Yes. There's currently a dumpster there or something really. He has some other has scrap metal to dump in there. He would said he would move that further down. Okay. So really this is a contractor's yard at this point in time. It's, it's how it would probably be defined. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be trailer storage was out there before in the past. Mark bought it, the trailers are gone and he's been storing his <coughs> His, his, some of his fleet out there. Okay. It was a carpet business, right? As before, like the storage, yes. Yeah. Steve Parks. Oh. Okay. This is this, this was Steve Parks' property. Yeah. There's yeah. He owned two pieces. This piece and this piece. Okay. So his house was the first that one there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're now they're two separate properties. Correct. Which explains why that one access point has been removed. Okay. That's why he had all of his um, uh, trailers. Yep. 
on, on registered trailers and so okay. Yeah, that's like this. They can prove it now. Now you can visualize it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, that helps me a little bit. Uh, maybe we have any questions like right like what's going on? <laughs> no, I, was, I, think, I think your comment is, I think it would be good to have a little bit more defined and, um, not only the lot size, but just the use of the land. It's sort of like, it's, it's so flexible that maybe that's fine, but it's just it's hard to get a handle on it. Are you asking for that now or before we do this or <coughs> something for us to discuss. I, I suggest we go through it by the criteria and if there's something I feel needs to be for the definition. Okay. Um, you know, I, I this I looked through the standards, there's nothing that says a plat has to come with this. Mm -hmm. uh, which may be a shortcoming of the bylaw. You know, we can always say we need it. Uh, but there's nothing that says you gotta have a surveyed plot. Right, no, I don't I'm not saying you need necessarily a survey. It certainly, for a, for a while, I thought the building and the property behind it was also part of the project, and so I yeah no the property lines like this right there yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but it was confusing yeah so. all right well let's, let's go through the site plan criteria and maybe that'll help us uh, to clarify that um, parking and loading areas uh, you just spoke to that a moment ago and uh, you're proposing parking in existing uh, parking area. Seven, six to ten lots. We would expect that's the average. We we have no way of knowing from day to day. But you have to designate. Yeah. You, have, you have to designate spaces. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. As far as we know, we can get ten, ten trucks parked. Like these are parked right here. And I presume here we're talking about larger trucks, so we're not talking nine by eighteen. Some of them actually smaller than that. Uh, no, the, the shortest truck is, is a 12-foot truck, the uh, overall length bumper the bumper is about uh, 17 feet. Um, the largest truck is a 26-foot truck, uh, and that's 32 feet. Yeah. Not your standard parking space, but hmm. unless you deal with trucks. Yeah. Um, with the... Um, And parking and loading goes on some length, um, anticipating uh, uh, people using the property. Would you have, other than having your own trucks for rent there, would you have other vehicles there? The only other vehicles that we would have there would be an employee's vehicle. Uh, okay. How many employees do you envision? Just one. Okay. Uh, people that come to rent trucks, do they leave their personal vehicles? Occasionally they ask, uh, you know, if, 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 if it's convenient, sometimes we let them do it, sometimes it's not. In the wintertime where we are now, we don't let them park because of the snow and so on and so forth. Yeah. There's times when it's convenient for people. Okay. But not for any length of time. The um, parking would not seem to be an issue uh, from my perspective. Anybody think it's an issue? No. Yeah. I mean, obviously it has to be addressed to them. Are you prepared? parking for six to ten vehicles um, and there's no loading areas in vision because there's no loading and loading here on site just to come and get truck and go away are those day use or are those longer terms no it varies it could be it could be long term someone like can get 30 days hmm. um, What kind of surface is the parking lot going to be? Right now, I mean, uh, as nice as it would be to have a pave, <laughs> right now, it's, a, it's just a, what we call a gravel or, or a stay mat. Stay mat. Stay mat. Stay mat. Um, and I presume the spaces are not marked. No. So it's so I'll fit it when you can. But I. It says um, applicant must surface parking in for more than 20 vehicles. Um, and 3202H 
but I don't think that this this necessarily falls in that category. You're not proposing 20 more vehicles. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just has to be firm and level. Mm -hmm. The surface is not necessarily pavement, right? Saying that would be correct. 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 Right. There is a prison in here for paving parking, but it, it was not. Um, where was it? So I think it's, well, I've seen it surface on that. Which A says the applicant must surface parking areas for 120 to with asphalt or concrete. Well, 20 or more vehicles. 20 or more vehicles. Right. So, so you're not proposing to have 20 or more vehicles. So, right. so stay that. Otherwise, that encourages yeah. pervious. Yeah. Um, uh, also, snow storage would be where? Snow storage? I'm not sure where he plows it now, but it wouldn't change. Okay, because it's basically you just take it over parking and he's using it or not using it. I assume we pull the plaza back over here. There's plenty of space there now. Um, I don't know that the rest of that's terribly applicable. It says, must landscape any parking area with more than 10 spaces? <coughs> over at 10, I guess. That's required by 3041. Yeah, uh, section 6. Okay. <coughs> Seen that portion of our subdivision regulations? I mean, our um, site plan review regulations. Landscaping is must uh, after the must landscape any parking area with more than ten spaces. And I guess the question I would ask is: Is parking there now? Um, and there's more than ten spaces total. I would guess. Um, it appears to me that there is some landscaping there now. Is that correct? There's there's grass and I'm not sure about the trees. I mean, we just uh, where it comes down over here. I haven't really looked to see what that is because we weren't concerned with that area. Um, you have a hedgerow here. Looks like a hedgerow in, in front of um, Airport uh, yeah. Airport Road, and it also looks like one is over on, on Water Road. Yes. Now, if you look at this, I mean, the section we just mentioned it, that. Uh, Subsection 6 says the applicant must landscape any parking area with more than 10 spaces as required by subsection 3204I. Yep. Now go to 3204I. And it mentions 20. It mentions 20. So but it, it also says, yeah, yeah. I, so is that a typo in, in subsection I? That means if they, what they're really talking about is if you have 20 lots and you have to do some landscaping. Yeah, that's what it seems like. And said this will not include converting existing impervious surfaces to parking. Yeah. But I, yeah, I would certainly, Josh, I'd certainly read that as if you have 10 or more spaces, then look at that section, but the section says you only have to uh, land <coughs> with 20 or more. Okay with that? Yeah. All right. It does appear to me that there is some landscaping there. Mm -hmm. um, but you're not really changing the use per se, right. other than it's kind of rental as opposed to right. not a rental. Yeah. Um, how much traffic would you have coming in and out of there in the course of a day? And it's an average, you know, it's an average transactions per week is anywhere from 25 to 35 transactions a week. 35 being on the very high side. A week. Um, yeah, and sometimes less than that. Um, which is one transaction is basically one truck coming and going. Maybe a car. Their car. Yeah. You know, a customer coming right. in. For yes. yeah. um, so snow storage is as it is being done now. Landscaping is not applicable. Is that correct? Yeah, interpreted? I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Moving right along. Um, vehicle access, access and circulation. I'm on 3203. Ah, okay. 
and you already applied for a letter of intent, and you have received a letter of intent from the state uh, for a modified access, uh, that will be the only access to your property. There is no other access besides this drive off of Airport Road, and it has to be modified to reduce it to um, uh, state standards. Is that basically a level? It, it tips down a little bit into tips, the, into tip the down into, onto the property. Yes. And the state has said it must be B-71 standards, so, uh, so the grade at the point where it meets Brother Sick Highway has to meet the standard, which is represented there. Yes, they already checked that when we were up there. We, Mark and I were both up there and then they said that that's fine. The only thing okay. we have to do is just narrow it. Just narrow it. Okay. Okay. So you would narrow, narrow it. that, maybe you could put some landscaping in. To make, to make they, it they said we'd have to put some grass. Maybe you can get a little more than a couple of trees. So something for bushes. Low bushes. Low bushes are the best. Low bushes are the best. That's true. Trees become a problem. Yeah. Is there any intended traffic flow in here, or is it just you, you, you pull in, if you're returning a truck, you pull in and you just pull it over some next to another truck and get out and go talk to somebody? And then, and then you, when you leave, you just get in and you back out, or do you, you you mean you're not back out into the road, but I mean, oh, no, you nobody will be backing out. You turn this way and then right. There's enough room there to turn turn the biggest stretch around. Because everything will be you won't be nothing will be stored right in. In the winter time, I believe Mark's still gonna be parking his trucks down at down at this end. Yeah. But they'll be all this will be all open. Okay. The um, so vehicle access uh, that would be conditioned upon receiving final state approval. Um, in accordance with the LOI uh, letter of intent. Um, it is access onto a state highway, even though it's a town road. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. road, I guess. It's a state road, that Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, public transit. Uh, you've indicated you don't know, think there's any public transit in the area. It may, in fact, be, but it's not actually how it's necessarily relevant. Um, uh, bicycle access, I'm not sure that's probably relevant either. Probably not a lot of people would drive their bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> 26 foot <laughs> truck. truck. <laughs> oh, why not? <laughs> I can think of yeah, one legislator yeah. from uh, Chittenden County that probably would. Oh, yeah, yeah, there you go. He probably would. McCormick, yeah, McCormick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Without mentioning names. Um, so I don't see the necessity for sidewalks and internal sidewalks and so forth. Right. Um, landscaping screening. I think we've discussed that already. Mm -hmm. This is a separate section, 3204. Um, does anybody think that this is applicable? No. I think there's more it's significant uh, change to, to the property than maybe because it's yeah. pretty yeah. minimal in landscape at the moment. But again, as they, as they narrow it up this entrance, that could do, that might be that nice. could yeah. do some landscaping in, in that area along the street front. Along the uh, yeah, airport. Would so you observe there to uh, some plantings in the uh, new green, green space area you know, you're being asked to put in there? I, I certainly don't. I don't uh, how long it would stay there before it's run over. But, um, <laughs> you have to maintain it. Really. <laughs> well, it's, uh, when we ask for landscaping, we expect them to be maintained. Yeah, that's section that's section that's 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 I'm not saying you have to find oak tree. There's an outfit. In the yard, <laughs> um, outdoor lighting is 3205. And um, what is there for outdoor lighting in the site now? I believe there's a street light there. You know, I haven't really looked myself, but I think there's only one street light. We wouldn't be adding to that. The only thing that we would want to add to is on the, on the corner of the building a floodlight or a motion light. Um, so if people are turning trucks after dark, they have access to a lockbox. Drop keys. Would that be just a light illuminating where the lockbox is? No, it would basically be out into the parking lot, but you know, not that far out into the parking lot. Just because okay, we have very strict lighting standards, and so um, I don't know if you looked at their uh, bylaws with regard to that, but uh, we have. We, it, it's several pages long. Yeah, and basically to light up a sidewalk or, or the access to the to the lockbox, which would be the corner of the building, and 
Okay, the, you're, you're talking about um, motion activated? Yes. Okay. And um, and you're talking about something that's probably aim, not aimed directly down when it's aimed out toward the parking area? A little bit, yeah. Okay. It shall, shall be no, aimed no higher than 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. um, Given our recent episodes, do we need to do more here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it should be. Do I dare use the word fully shielded? Well, that says. <laughs> but if it's 45 degrees, 45 degrees, 45 degrees is not fully, fully shielded. shielded. Right. Yeah. But we should make, if it's going to be 45 from its location, then that's, it's got, kind of, they got enough, they have enough space there that, that probably you won't see it from beyond the you know, perimeter of their boundaries. You wouldn't see the light, right? You could do it. How, how high is the, the light would be, what elevation? I mean, the I, top I, I can't imagine a building that's much more than 10 or 12 feet up. Yeah, so, so it's, a, it's a flat roof. Right, so it's 10 feet tall and it's 45 it's degree angle, it's only going to go out 10 feet. I don't imagine it's going to go up very far. <laughs> no, it's just for safety reasons we won't want anybody to trip getting into the door. Is, is that 24-7 uh, light? Um, would it be on all the time? No, I would be. I would oh, think it'd be motion activated because there's motion. a street light. I, th I think there's a street light in there now. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. If that's green enough power, green enough power is already probably switched yeah. it over to fully right. shielded. Yeah. Oh, well. But um, there is a little confusion here from mm -hmm. reading the general standards. Exactly. It says here the um, applicants must use fully shielded outdoor light fixtures as specified in 305. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then it also in in section subsection five of that, it does seem to allow for spotlights aiming no higher than 45 degrees. And a spotlight aiming no higher than 45 degrees is not fully shielded. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't quite understand that. And in fact, they give that as a definition that if uh, it's not aimed straight down, it is not fully shielded. Yeah, correct. So to me, that's almost as if they're giving a definition. But then 5A, I agree, it, it indicates some must. Yeah. So, uh, this would seem to allow for a spotlight, yeah, I um, I but it has to meet, uh, it does have to meet the standards of three, uh, 305, right? and um, zone 2. There's 305, okay. Is that zone? That's class 2. Everything's fully shielded according to this yeah, that's, that's definition of it. Yeah. Fully shielded, shielded being what exactly? <laughs> <laughs> One of the definitions <laughs> here is pointing straight down. Pointing straight down. Yeah. In other words, like no, a street light. Yeah. So like street light, uh, well, like the contemporary street lights, which the new ones are literally Cut off, you know. I mean, there's, there's the size yeah. level with the yeah, no, no, yeah. With, the, with the light. If you were at the as same opposed, height, as opposed to a bulb like this. You're at the same height as the light, and you're looking at it sideways. You shouldn't be able to yeah. see the light itself because you see the you see where it hits the ground, but you shouldn't be able to see the the fixture, the, fixture. the light inside the fixture because you're if the, the light can't go. Horizontal. The bulb doesn't come down below the size of the light right. of the fixture. So if it's up ten feet, you're going to see it anyway. Well, if you look up, but the sides of the fixture should should cover the bulb. If you're at the level of the light. Right. If you're at the level of the light. Okay. Yeah. Well, 3205G security lighting, which is this is for security mm -hmm. purposes, yep. um, does allow the board to waive or modify lighting standards to allow it up against the stall and use. What what? Uh, how many lumens would this fixture be? I realize that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> you may find you may find. You said they knew that twenty years ago. <laughs> you have to before the zoning board. I wasn't even looming. Is that? Careful. Whatever's required, I guess. <laughs> that's probably what it's going to be. <laughs> Not to exceed X number of lumens. So. I just have to find it in here. Mm -hmm. uh, Anybody have any of this on the light? No. The key is it's not going to be 24 7. It's going to be only on when it's uh, dark and when it's motion activated. Right. I have it. Post uh, motion activated and. Uh, uh,
quite sensitive and sensitive right. to darkness. Sir. I'm having trouble with that word at the moment. Um, you said you might apply for a sign, but it'd be a future date. No one sign. We're going to have a little bit of 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 a little when it was less than 2,000 lumens, the original version of this, it could have been partially shielded. But oh. then we changed it, everything fully shielded. Right. Yeah. And so it's really moot because everything's fully shielded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But still, uh, if we're going to allow for a partially shielded, which is what a 45 degree light is defined yes. as yes. in the definitions, it ought to be less than 2,000 lumens. Less than which is still not a lot. Less than 2,000 lumens. And the good news is the light bulb will tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being educated. <laughs> um, so signs not applicable at this time. You will apply it for a future date. Mm -hmm. Moving right on. Mm -hmm. uh, you get sort of a lot of pages right there. Well, a lot of signs. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of signs. Will you have any directional signs or anything like that? Telling people maybe in like entrance mm -hmm. exits. The trucks pretty much speak for themselves. Yeah. 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 You're not proposing any outdoor use area. I think you said that in your narrative. No. Um, other than the vehicles, will there be any outdoor storage? No. There is outdoor storage there now by Mark, though, is there not? Or yeah, just vehicles. I don't know that he has any storage there. There's no containers that I've seen there. I don't think I have that. I just don't buy it today. Actually, I wanted to buy one of those containers, but they disappeared real fast. I can not know where you can get them. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, we help tax those things in the town of Berlin. So, you know. This is for I gave oh, yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't read their bylaw yet. <laughs> Do they have zoning there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least the Mills Zone Administrator, he died. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. Is there anything else? Like more control. 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 He's not proposing any, yeah, he's not proposing any activity. Small it's not projects. applicable. Yeah. I mean, the performance standards, but no other's glare, odor, something that applies. Post construction. Do you know what is happening with stormwater management on this site? Where's the, where the runoff go? Don't know. You're not making any changes to the runoff. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Uh, how large is the lot, two acres? 2.06. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so stormwater management is not applicable. And then it's a conditional use. And so under conditional use standards, um, do we have any input from our municipal officials? Uh, we have the state. Yes, we also have LOI. I did not Chief Wolf. receive anything from Chief Wolf, not, nor Chief Dufresne. But, um, was it sent to them? Uh, yes, it was. Yeah. Um, Traffic, we already talked about that. It's pretty minimal traffic generation here. Yeah. Uh, you said 35 transactions a week. That's, that's, a, yeah. Yeah. that's hopeful. Um, the um, character of the area, uh, impact on natural resources, you're not making any changes. Um, You're not reducing solar access to adjacent properties. And uh, and conform to these regulations. Yeah. I don't see anything here. No. Let's put more. Okay. Uh, anything else, Mr. Zoning Administrator? No. Well, I have a motion to close the hearing. Do we need anything? Are we, are we no, going impact, Chief Wolf. Chief Wolf, no impact, okay. okay. So do we need anything going forward? Um, 
landscaping. He's going to landscape the front there when he does the reduction in the. So that will be a condition of the permit. Is there a time frame here? I know the state says have up to a year to do it. Do what? Be a land more driveway? Do you have access? Yeah. Uh, we would dish it upon your, the, your such time as the access is, re is reconstructed uh, as for plantings in that green space for screening. That's the Okay, because I mean, right now we're running out of time here. We're not sure that we're even going to be able to get in there now before springtime. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Not until you do this access. Not until you do the access. Do the yeah, the access. You don't need to do the landscaping until you do the access. Oh, I mean, look, the, the access, they, they said we could have up to a year to do that. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. That's yeah. So I wouldn't restrict this from moving in. You can't do the landscaping until you do the access. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. 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 yeah, I got that. So. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah, no. Um, so the, you, what, do you do, what, what, what do you do with that access is you know, between you and the state. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just saying you must comply with the state. Mm -hmm. And we read there, and, and frankly, I think it's a good, it's good, it's a good plan. Um, so, uh, so most have been made and been seconded to close this hearing. Is there further discussion? No. There being none, all those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? And we have hearings closed. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I, have one, one, yeah, I have one item in, in, in open meeting still, which is the approved, approval of the minutes of October 1st. Yeah, And uh, two items. Oh, yes, two items. Yeah, we have, we have approval of the minutes. Um, let's do that one if that's easy. <laughs> and we'll do the other one, which is on the agenda, which is site visit, which is to talk about site visits to 1699 okay. Hill Street Extension. Um, so, um, the minutes of the um, October 1, I had several comments. I shared some of them with everybody. Uh, so there's some minor stuff I didn't share. Um, when we talk about the meeting being recorded by Orca, that's correct at the time you write that, but probably it should be past tense. It was recorded by Orca. <laughs> okay, yep. Um, ah. Just, just Ted says you, and then a couple of places like under your 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 text under chapters, where, where you're in the um, uh, going through the different sections 3502, you say not comments. Yep, that's right. Yeah, and it's no comments. Yep. Um, and you do that. One or two other places. Just, just as my editorial that, yeah. comments. Um, <coughs> I saw it more of a place. Oh yeah, um, under section B, the road, for, road foreman had not issues, no issues. Down under the, um, so. So that, that was it. I, I think I said in my text that um, I thought something was missing from that first sentence on top of page three. Did you? Um. There is something missing. <laughs> it just goes from on, on the page, previous page. Yeah. It says, "Should meet B seventy one standard," and then you go needs a copy of the permit. I must. Have, I copied it from something, so that's probably just got stuck in. And, um, and and we don't need a copy of the permit a copy from the. Um, um, I don't know. What, I don't know what you're referring to. If you were talking about the um, <laughs> wastewater, we don't need that because you, Tom gets that anyway. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to say that. It's, it's, it, they need to, the, the, the issue always is they need to obtain it. And then you get notified that they can, and you, in fact, you get a copy of the permit. You do, and then they can come to the court as well. Okay, so, yeah, so I took that you know, So something, something there that didn't quite follow. So you, your solution is to eliminate that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then I just wanted you to, um, uh, and I was suggested that you could put it right in, in the sentence about Mr. Parker. I thought it was useful to note that the um, the building was a residence when he bought it in 1977. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, would you like to just put it in there? I, I would put it right. It says, it says basically 
the, the, the FDA department has been there since 1976, and I put right after that, the house was a residence when he bought in 1977. Yeah. And then the next big part of that same sentence becomes makes sense and downstairs became commercial in 1980, 1981. It is, you know, I thought that was important testimony. <coughs> Okay. Um, and I didn't have when you exited a deliberative session. And I don't, I could not remember which why I didn't answer. Did anybody else remember when we came out of the deliberative session and when we adjourned? But that when we go in and into deliberative session. 803. 803. Based on the, on the, uh, I'm pretty the, sure we. I think it was around 8. 45 or yeah, so? Yeah, I was going to say 45 myself. I think it was too. <laughs> no, that sounds about right. I was trying to think it's so, Because I know I got, I'm pretty sure I got home before 9. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Longer than, okay. than some deliberations, but <laughs> yep. did not go to 9 o'clock. <laughs> okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'll, I'll make the motion we include the minutes with those Second. Corrections. Second. Motion been made. Second discussion. Further discussion, I'd say. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And now I want to entertain a motion. Oh, no. Um, the second visit of, uh, for uh, 1699. Yep. Um, you all got, I, you didn't copy it on all the correspondence that Tom and I were getting. Um, Which one is 1699? Riddle. <laughs> huh? Riddle. Riddle. What are we looking at? The, the question, the, the issue was, would the shielding that was done by Green Mountain Power be sufficient? And um, and the actually, um, um, Chris, uh, whatever his name Bradley. is, uh, he, he acknowledged he did. Yeah. Right. He said that. that yeah. So it sort of made the discussion move. Then, but then there's the issue of the spotlights. I think we should talk about that in the session. Okay. But does anybody feel that they want to do a site visit to see how no. the shielding worked out? No. Not, not if he said he was fine with it. Yeah. 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 I may go. I, I drive by there every day. Yeah. <laughs> I want, oh, yeah, I, I appreciate that. But I, I wanted to see sort of what, what the, the outcome results was. Of, yeah, the results of the shielding. Well, that's a that's a thought so, because this is going to come back to us again, oh, yeah. again with these issues. I mean, um, I have no problem with going. I, mean, I, I can go, I, I, I can request a site visit by myself or I, or we can coordinate one. You. All right, why don't I call Chris and find a good time? <clears throat> and, um, and, and, Incidentally, during deer season, there really isn't a good time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's dark. Well, as long as it's dark. Yeah, by the time we get off a night stand, you're right, it's dark. It's too dark yeah. to start making the same visits. <laughs> oh, okay, but that's the time to go. I mean, I've been writing, I've been writing. Oh. It's dark. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, something like that would work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so if you let me know when it is, I may go. I just, yeah. I don't All right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to schedule yeah. something yeah. Out, of, out of curiosity. and. Um, and, and uh, I'll adjust the schedule to, to meet yours if to, you'd like. So, Appreciate um, it. I generally, you know, I mean, after seven, so I specify. Yeah. Well, it would, be, it would be after seven. I almost okay. guarantee that. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I will contact so, him and, and find a time to look at it. So, so I make a motion with the deliberative session. At 829. Oh, thanks. At 829. Motion made. Is it seconded? Second. Discussion? I guess it's not discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.